While many sock yarns contain nylon to add to a hand net sock's durability, not all sock yarns do. And even when you do use yarn containing nylon, some sock recipients are hard on their socks, wearing them out far sooner than anyone would like. In this week's Technique Tuesday video, I'll demonstrate how to add reinforcement to a sock that is off the needles. If you'd like to jump right to a specific point in the video, you can tap or mouse over the video playback area of the screen to reveal the chapter titles and starting points of each section. What I have here are a couple of socks that I just recently finished knitting, and I'm adding some reinforcement at key points in the soles of the sock where I tend to wear my socks out. Now, the reason I'm doing this is because neither of the yarns that I use to knit these socks contain any nylon. Because these socks don't contain nylon, I want to reinforce them. For these two socks, I use basically the same technique, but I used three different methods. You can see this kind of has like a, a zigzag appearance to it here. And if you can see on here, this looks like a regular woven piece of fabric. And then over here, it's more offset. So these, these three were all done using the same basic technique, just in a slightly different way. So I'm gonna demonstrate on this swatch because it's a nice medium color. It's a worsted weight yarn and I'm knitting it at a standard worsted weight gauge rather than at a firm gauge uh, that you would knit for a sock. And that is just to facilitate you being able to see what I'm doing. We're gonna do this on the pearl side of the fabric where all of the pearl bumps are. The yarn that is typically gonna be easiest to use will be the yarn that you use to knit your socks. It doesn't have to be. If you ran out or you don't have enough to reinforce with that, you can reinforce with a different color. It won't really be seen on the right side of the work when you're done. Using something that's the, a similar yarn weight is helpful, or you can use something that's a little bit thinner. What I'm going to use is the same yarn, but in a different color, again, so that you can see what's going on. The next thing I have to do is choose what needle I'm going to use in order to weave this yarn through the backs of the stitches. So normally, if I'm doing something like seaming or I'm weaving in yarn tails, I like to use a needle with a bent tip, and that's because if I'm doing something like seaming, typically I'm going down through the fabric and then back up again, and having that bent tip is really helpful. In this case, we're going to be running a strand of yarn up this column of stitches, and having a bent tip would be kind of a disadvantage. It doesn't mean you can't make it work if that's all you have. A straight needle and then one that is not sharp at the end because you don't want to pierce through the stitches. You want to be able to go underneath the stitches. So I tried my sock on to see where that ball of my foot is. Um, just because I know from experience, this is where I will tend to wear thin on my socks. Some people really wear out in the toes so wherever you normally would wear out or the recipient would normally wear out. So I looked at this and I thought, oh, these two stripes right here, I'll just reinforce there. And that was just an easy landmark for me. If I didn't have that landmark, I could have uh, put another um, locking stitch marker at the locations above and below where I thought it would work so that I could see them on the inside. These two markers just represent the sole of the sock so I know that I'm going across the sole and I'm, I'm not off center at all. So if you look at a close up of here, you can see that I have woven this yarn in uh, between these two stripes. You'll also see that I have uh, two different sorts of weaving patterns. This one is very uh, regular, looks like a regular woven uh, piece of fabric. And over here, you can see that the little bumps that appear on the surface are more offset. There's no right or wrong. I just wanted to try each of them out and see what I thought. Let's say that we want to start along here. We are going to insert our needle underneath one of these uh, bumps. And you can see that these bumps are offset. Some of them are upper and some of them are lower kind of at a, di a diagonal. The, 
we have these upper bumps are all on the same row and these lower bumps uh, are all in the same row with respect to each other. So I like to pick a, an upper bump, one of the ones that looks like it's slightly curved like a frown rather than like a smile. And I'm going to use that column to go all the way up. So I'm going to come under this one, but over the bump above it. So I'm going to weave in and out over and under the bumps in that particular column all the way up, however far I need it to be, like that. And then I can pull the yarn through. I want to come down another set of these upper bumps. I don't want to come down these lower bumps right here. I want to come down this other set of upper bumps. So I've gone through all of those. You don't want to pull tight, you just want to get rid of any slack. So just coming up and then back down again. So if you do it like this, it will end up looking the way this looks over here, where I'm going under the bumps along the same row and over the bumps on the same row uh, in between. So it would look uh, very much like a, a perfect grid. You can do it that way. I'll do one more. So I'm going to, to go over to the next bump that's in that same row. And again, I'm going to go over, under, over, under, all the way up. And again, I recommend practicing this on something. This is so much easier to do on a larger swatch and so that you can kind of get the hang of what it is you're looking for and get the muscle memory in place before you do it on something that's tinier and darker and a lot, and a lot harder to see what you're doing. So the other way that you could go up and down is to have these be offset. So if I went over a bump right here, then on that next column, I would go under it instead. So I'm going to come up one row just to get underneath um, to get started for this column right here. So now I'm going to go under, over, under, over. And you can see while the needle is in here that these are offset from the ones over here. I'm going to do uh, one more. And again, I'm going to come um, down a row. I ended a little bit above this one. So I'm going to come back down here. So you can see here what having them offset looks like from each other um, versus having them all in line with each other. Now there is another way of doing this. It takes twice as long, it's a lot more tedious, but if you're using a yarn that's maybe substantially thinner to do this, you might want um, to use this approach. And that is to go up and down every single column. So. Um, what I did here was I went through all of those upper bumps that were along here. Now we have these lower bumps. So what I could do is come in through the lower bumps that are in between those stitches. So this is going to put them closer together.
And now I want to go through the upper bumps that are next to it. So in this case, these are closer together and you, you have to keep track, you have to do this for every row. So instead of creating 30, if I had something that was 32 stitches wide, if I use this technique, I'd have 32 columns of these. But if I use this technique, I'd have 64 of them. So it's gonna take twice as long. And again, when the stitches are tinier and darker and harder to see, it can be difficult. But that is the technique that I used for the sock heel. And I did not use the sock yarn that I used to knit the sock. I used something that was thinner. This is more of a, a lace weight type of yarn. Um, it's in fact, it's a spool that came in a ball of sock yarn. I think this was Lang Yawol. They sell self-striping sock yarn that has nylon content in it, but they include a little spool that has the same color dyeing uh, process or pattern to it so that you can knit with this yarn when you are knitting certain sections of the sock to add reinforcement. Um, but I don't tend to use it because the sock yarn itself has nylon and I don't typically find the need but I do save these in case I want to use them. So this is, the yarn would have been a fingering weight and this is more of a lace weight. So this is a thinner yarn that you can use while you're knitting um, and I chose to use it in order to do the reinforcement and to be able to place them very close together. So having less frequent reinforcement with a thicker yarn is really gonna end up being the same as more frequent with thinner yarn. So it just depends on what you want to do. There's also um, these kinds of reinforcement yarns that are sold in different colors. Like this one is from Fortissima Saka and these have nylon, but this is that lace weight as well. And it has the same nylon content in it that you would typically find in a lot of commercial sock yarns. So if you didn't want to use something that had nylon in it, you could just use a lace weight yarn that had the same fiber content uh, and washing instructions of whatever it was that you used to knit your sock with. In this case, it worked pretty easily to use the same uh, yarn weight as the swatch was knit in and put them close together, but that's also because the gauge that I knit this swatch at would have been whatever was on the ball band, which is looser than whatever you would normally knit a sock with. So it, it's pretty easy to squeeze this yarn in because I'm not knitting this to a really firm gauge. It would have been really hard for me to use this sock yarn and have them spaced that closely together just because I was working at nine stitches per inch with a, a yarn that where the ball band would have said something like eight stitches per inch. So that's something to keep in mind is how thick the yarn is and how close you want these stitches to be. If you look at the, this purple sock, this is the place where I have done uh, the, the reinforcement right here. And you can't see that. Even if you could see it a little bit, you would never see it while I was wearing the sock because it would be inside my shoe or on the floor. For the, the red sock, I use a very high contrast a yarn in order to reinforce it. And there are a couple of places where it is peeking through here. And if I stretch it, you can certainly see it. When I'm wearing this sock, you can see it a little bit. And again, this is very high contrast. I chose that so that I could see what I was doing and, and you could see what I had done. So you can see it kind of peeking in between those stitches if I pull on it. That's going to be face down as I'm wearing the sock. So if you choose something that is reasonably close in color, you are unlikely to be able to see it from the outside of the work. There are many approaches to ensuring the socks you knit will have longevity. Adding reinforcement to areas of the sock that receive the most wear is just one solution to the longevity challenge. Yarn selection, a firm gauge, and a good fit are also key to getting the most wear out of your socks. Check the sock playlist over here for more sock videos or check the video description below for a link to my tutorial on custom fit socks. If you have any comments or questions about today's video or suggestions for videos you'd like to see in the future, you can leave those down in the comments below or join the discussion in my Ravelry group, Rocks Rocks. Thanks for watching.
and I'll see you next time.